Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to greet one another. Please be seated. Let's get to the business of the night. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. I want to appreciate everyone for the sacrifice. It takes love for God to appear before Him every now and then. And I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I go on with the teaching tonight, I, I just want to challenge us on two things very quickly. Number one is just to remind us of the fact that um, what is happening in this place is a very prophetic move of God. Um, but then you never really understand the move of God as a peace you have to look at the broader picture every man's destiny what we call assignment whether for an individual for a church a ministry or for a territory is their contribution i like using that word contribution because it gives us um, a realization that there are other facets a contribution to the big picture god has an idea he's a, he has an agenda we've taught again and again on the agenda of god the book of colossians the first two chapters examine intently the agenda of god it tells us the predeterminate counsel of god hallelujah uh, it's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not uh, realize that god is actually going somewhere with us this is not just an endless pursuit a loyalty to a vision a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with god this is more than that praise the lord it's important that we we understand that this is not just a ministry this is not just a church this is a move of god and that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture that which god is doing upon the surface of the earth when you realize this you will come with every sense of seriousness hallelujah the second thing i want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations it's important that whenever you come for koinonia generally speaking whenever you go to any ministry any church um, take time to study the operation of god in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors his predeterminate counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when god calls a people when god commissions a ministry an assignment there are usually certain graces please pay attention graces anointings and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um committed to those people so those who come must be aware that i am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit and that coming to that ministry can make it possible i was teaching the prayer department on tuesday during their prayer and i was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres are we together now when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation 
But you see, if you don't realize what is obtainable, Bishop Oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity. That you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible. So the Lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again, to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place. Please, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people. I know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation. They just love to see sinners saved. That's wonderful. But um, this is not one of those platforms. Believe me. I want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit. This is not a minor contribution to what God is doing on earth. If you, if you see it that way, you will, you will not give your best. There's been a lot of prophecy about Zaria. Right from before some of us were born. There's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season. So, we're not just stumbling into a move of God resident within the north. No. There is a mystery behind this move of God that is coming in this season and what God is doing. And so, I want us to understand that we are prophecy being played. Jesus, in the book of Luke chapter 4, the Bible says, reading from verse 16 downward, that he took the book, the, 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 the scroll where it was written about him, where prophet Isaiah wrote about him, right? And he began to read it, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then when he read down, he said, this day, in other words, what you see is a manifestation of that. When the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, Peter told them, this is that. In other words, look, you are now seeing the manifestation of something. I pray that one day as you study the Bible, you will see koinonia there. That as you study, you will suddenly connect and say, God said this will happen. We are seeing that this is not just a circumstance, but this is prophecy. Hallelujah. I need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared. It's very, very important. There is nothing, listen, there is no major move of God that happens without being spoken about. I used to see these days, years ago in visions. I never knew it would be this way. Glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this. And I knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no everyone who desires to press into god as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now god always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of God can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are seeing please value it I want you to value it I want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of God. You know how pastors say, look, we are going places. And the members say, I'll be there with you. This is not one of those things. It's not just that we are going places. You will see how this move fits into prophecy. It will happen. I've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move 
but I was more than willing to participate. I was desperate. I, I insisted that the move will not happen in my absence. Hallelujah. So you must, you must be very intentional. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you are here seated in this place tonight, it's because there is prophecy upon your life believe that if there was no prophecy upon your life you would not be here i'm not motivating you i am telling you that among all these people there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with that's why god made sure that you have to be here in this season and it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah, the principle of substitution is that which we see in, this, in, in scripture. Again and again that the mandate of a man, not just his mantle, his entire assignment can be given to another. We read about Saul in the Bible. Right? Saul, the son of Kish. A time came, he was there seated on the throne, but the entire mandate had been given to him. Terah, the father of Abraham. The very assignment of Abraham, terror was to be the father of nations. But he messed up because of lack of alignment. And the mandate went to Abraham. When Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus Christ, God insisted that there had to be a replacement for him. You see that? So, brothers and sisters, please realize that for every one of us seated here you are not seated here for your sake you are seated for the sake of a generation listen for their sake listen for the sake of your children listen for the sake of those who are hungry for god but may never have access to come to these territories listen as a school pay attention as though you are being trained for something great I've always given my life and the presence of God and the word of God utmost seriousness. You never see me distracted in the house of God and in the presence of God. You must please pay attention. This is not just a time of worship, a worship service. It's an impartation. There is something happening to you. There is growth. There is ascendance in the spirit. Four things I want you to always expect when you come number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this it's a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that God is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional I want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel 
an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation the lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day in 24 hours something must start fighting you are we together no matter how hardened you are when you come into this place you can choose to argue but it's like a virus it has caught up with your spirit hallelujah you can pretend eh, there's nothing usual about it but i tell you if you come for just one meeting and you never attend you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again it's, it's like a cancer it's a see there are mysteries that support the things we do it's not just happening there is a revelation that sponsors this have you seen a man you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him then when he goes back he starts thinking about it and say god but this person cheated me oh that's what happens here so when the word of god comes upon your spirit there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of god hallelujah radical transformation i trust that god will grant us grace that we would be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people literally without exaggeration of people that have been blessed just through these teachings 70 percent of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person there is a mystery to these teachings the presence of god and it's power to change people i've gone for meetings and seen people talk and i thought i was hearing myself and i looked at them and they said sir you have never seen me but i have 200 of your messages i have 250 of your messages i have your message till last week that's the power of transformation to change states right so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the lord taught me as i have worked with the lord and i've incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance i've said it again one of the things that i have um i have been disturbed about in the body of christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people 
everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding that you understand god in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if i teach you on the anointing and the holy spirit you will think i'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of god is concerned so you don't mislead people i've heard ministers that i respect their perspectives in different areas but i've heard them communicate other areas and i am shocked to see their degree of ignorance it's like someone who imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind i have been obsessed about balance one of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life it will not be that i believe they lie hallelujah and that i've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of god here those who are pastors maybe inside outside i challenge you do not take for granted never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach there are pastors now i'm not against people but there are pastors who sit down cross their leg watch football you know eat and do everything and say ah it's time and they just come and say look where did we even stop last week no don't play with people like that take them seriously the church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you're only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor and at any time i find out that what i've communicated is not accurate i do not have any embarrassment to come back and say look let's realign we have seen something clear hallelujah is god speaking to us expect transformation you can measure transformation your degree of change your thinking the way you analyze things your comprehension of the workings of the spirit this is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity you cannot be uh, coming here week in week out whether indoors or outside 
and then something is not changing about your life you can't be doing the same things saying the same things having the same convictions no the word of god alters your convictions something about you must change something about you must change something about your prayer life must change something about your passion for the word something about your interpretation of the word something about the ideology of god you knew growing up must shift it must be altered are we together now something about the ministry of the holy spirit must change in your life if that is not happening you are not changing you are not changing I detest stagnancy in my life like cancer I detest it I'm obsessed with progress I like to see progress that's why I hate stagnancy anyone who is close to me knows that I'm constantly in a state of transition change you can't be in the same level for a long time intellectually physically When we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations, part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy. There are some of us, there was one stone near your house from the time you were born. That stone is still there. Nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better? It's still there. As a monument that does not motivate anything, only brings pain and regret. You remember they flogged you near that stone. You remember that's where they drove you out of the house. Nothing to inspire you. The word of God should change you. That at the end of every koinonia service, you should just sit down like this and get up. I like it when the word of God enters people and I study the reactions of people to the word. Not just, oh, preach, preacher. That's, there's a place for that, but that your spirit is, is receiving something and you're saying, look, what am I doing? Is is God is giving me too much opportunity. I'm wasting grace. I'm making the word of God of non effect. Let the word of God challenge me. He said, The spirit entered into me, Ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2, and set me upon my feet. The spirit entered when he spake unto me. He brought an idea that is superior to that which I have known, and it compels change. Change with results immediately. That you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately. Make certain vows and commitments. Enter into certain strong personal covenants with God. On account of what you have heard. The Bible says, meditate on these things. It says, give yourself wholly to them. It says that you're profiting. Brothers and sisters, ask God how much I pray for you. I don't think I pray for you. I pray for myself one tenth of the way I pray for you and my prayer is not God give them cars give them houses that's a stupid prayer the prayer is oh God let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery that's what will produce every other thing you know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery that you come into oneness with these mysteries you know them you are persuaded about their reality and they begin to produce remarkable results in your life financial prosperity spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me i don't know about other preachers but i hate being the only one i know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy but i hate being the only one who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when i see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people it gives me great joy so it pains me when after a long time our level of spiritual metamorphosis is slow we must step up this year in the name of jesus christ say amen you see if you don't step up a time will come you will think that what i'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated are we together now you will be frustrated 
Number three. The third thing you must expect every time. This will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite. You must expect revival. Revival. An awakening. This is a place, a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me i used to love god i used to be passionate now i don't know what is happening let me go and find out. Part of the vision God has given us is to make this place a place of refiring. A place of revival. Hallelujah. That in, in the days of the generals, they had places, the doors of the churches were open 24 hours. There were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city. You didn't even need a pastor. If something was wrong with you, just go there and lie down. We've had a few of those places, even in this place. Many of you do not know, some years ago in the campus, where used to be long tennis court, there were so much spiritual investments in that place, it became an open heavens, literally. That's when you see people carry their results. Probation. They just go and lie down with rechargeable. No prayer. They are just saying, Lord, kill me here. If, if it, 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 it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled. A sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say, Lord, I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm, I'm here for you. And I'm telling you, mantles that fell upon people. This is a preface to what I'm about to share tonight. We must restore mantles back to the church. We must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge. It's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure. Imagine if all the hospitals in Nigeria go on strike. We'll give birth on the road. People will die in cars. The moment somebody has an accident, we run. And you see the confidence of the doctors. You are welcome. They don't move with hospitals around. They station it in a place. And you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital. Those who trek, those on bike, they just want to get there. Because they know if I arrive, I'm, I don't even know what is wrong with me. I think it's headache, but let the doctor speak. And when certain doctors try and it fails, they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field. They are called specialists. They look at you and they say, go and lie down. We are operating you. Something is wrong. Ah, doctor, what? Lie down. We have seen many of these kind of cases. You are not feeling fine. Do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of Christ today? Every city is supposed to have these provisions. When a city does not have that provision, there is no apostolic authority over their city. The hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city. Where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city. Please, I want you to hear what I'm saying. You can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities. It's not a name. It's not a title. It's an office. They are the gatekeepers of the happenings of God in that city. They communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church. When darkness is about to enter that city, they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city. Stop Koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city. That's when you will know what we represent in the spirit. Never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people. God's idea is that in every city, there must be apostolic authorities. But because of the disalignment of many people, those who have called, have, have been called, have refused to align. 
God will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there. This is the concept of multiplication of grace. When people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit, God will have to come to his servant and say, this was initially not in your curriculum, but to not to frustrate my counsel, I know how uneasy it is for you but i will multiply your grace you see that when i multiply your grace i will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage like a territory will also enter certain dimensions you will know when an apostolic authority has expanded you will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in Nigeria are pastors. I don't mean pastors like Kaito. It was never that design. But there is a sudden restoration. If a pastor ever functions, and a prophet ever functions, and an evangelist ever functions, if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities, they will get into error. Because you see, the primary of an assignment of the, of the apostolic office is not just teaching, it's kingdom governance. They administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation. And they supervise its safe delivery. Any true apostle of God that you know is a hard person. The word of God is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament. The grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace. Even if you are a quiet person. They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. If our parents understood this structure many of them will never be where they are now they are sincere people but they are victims of the disorganization of the church so they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them are we together the church structure was so designed so that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry when it comes to these matters is by the spirit no it's by the spirit you don't say I'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading God's people. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit. I want you to know this and take advantage of it. We are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build this elapse on your own path. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So revival. Oh, may this place remain a place. If you know people who are weary and out, you can just drag them. Somebody tells you, me now, I've done everything you can think about. And you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person, come. I know a place where the river flows from Zion. And I will just come and keep you in that atmosphere. The person may even come late, just like many people outside here. And while they listen, something is happening. It's more than the words we speak. There is a spirit communication. If it were words, believe me, you will be tired by now. There is a difference between newness and freshness. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. 
Mandala Kaparadosh. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. And in your name, we will rise. I don't lie. You reign on high. Adonai, Adonai, yeah. Adonai, yeah. you ready on. Sing in your name, in your name. Malaka parakos kata brande gadebash. We will rise. Era na na Maria moso na na Maria na. Sing Adonai, 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 Adonai. Hey, just the voices. Adonai, Adonai. Men de kalabasoto pusia. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on high. You reign on high. Sing Adonai. Adonai. Na 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 sensitive to what God is doing tonight. Adonai You reign on high Adonai Adonai the last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God. It's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people. It's a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative. There must be a spiritual center that represents the might of God in a city. There must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go. We are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory. In the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was said to be the cleanest city. Hallelujah. E.W. Kenyon so many people have received this message without carrying his mantle a truck hit somebody in his church pieces the leg he stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back it was not a strange miracle that was the miracle of ushers we have lost so much we are not aware we don't know our spiritual heritage Pastors don't research. They just get up and preach nonsense. Nonsense! And everybody claims he's doing something. I don't say this in a cynical way. My heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry. Nothing current in what the Spirit is doing. We celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suits and we have a nice car to prove that it is working. Is that how much we love the body? We have lost touch with our spiritual heritage. We don't know what happened before we came. And we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of God. A custodian of a mystery is also a historian. One who meticulously studies the dealings of God. How did God move in the 50s? 
how did God move in the 60s how did God move in the 80s when revivals died what happened have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy they were just searching the connecting prophecy and when it was time for them to die they left the curriculum for whoever would take up ministry is full time full time your entire life is spent guiding the people of God ministry is not a vocation where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that I don't feel like I've wasted my life I just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when I start buying a nice shoe and I can afford suit or something or I have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages I get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday it affects a territory if they close by Thursday people cannot wait for Monday Monday morning everybody is standing and arguing with their ATM no matter how much they have in their account because they, they miss the bank for three days I'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival the spirit of true revival Night on night, you reign on night. Revelation chapter 3. In your name, we will rise. I don't know, you reign on night. Casting crowns, lifting hands. Bowing hearts is what I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, Jesus, I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, Jesus. See, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation ask him if he goes on holiday we must make the body of Christ an institution these are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement when you are tired that's when somebody is when you are you are charged that's when somebody else is tired there will always be people oh i look forward to those times center for kingdom activities there's a message playing there's worship playing there is a place to flog it out activities of angels that's what will happen listen listen we are not a social welfare group we are not we are not contributing to helping government no we are not helping any government we are enforcing something that this thing they are doing is nonsense we are not a part of it we are loyal citizens but this is not our ideology so i'm not i'm not in partnership with any government doing anything we are not social welfare we are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent There are, there are few territories where you go 
that you i mean there should be these kinds of place these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere right and just pray and see somebody praying with you a christian library books about generals where you go and sit down and study there are dvds playing archives not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying ten thousand somebody saying one million say oh lord i find comfort in you a city of refuge do you know why many believers compromise there is no kingdom community that community life of the kingdom is not there there is no place they can retreat to when they have been wounded and beaten by darkness when their faith is stretched there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge and you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise they will allow you to do any conference you want but make up your mind to create a physical portal for people all hell will fight it and those people will usually be christians we owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things there has to be somebody in ancient times they usually are these elders and when israel starts messing up moses and all the people will say okay let me remind you because then some of you were not born how by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of egypt right he did this and that and the people are listening and at the end of it the people say ah we repent we will serve the lord satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there, there, there's there no more there, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you oh, may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he's doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth because he's pressing to find expression when when anna was mocked by penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says i'm, I'm here any day any time just come with your boat and you see a christian dragging a he goat to a, a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them we have the mouth to call everybody fake there are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake right ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body let me tell you if i'm sick if i were not born again and i'm sick and dying i will go to any herbalist i don't care anybody that is talking to me I hear what I'm saying. I will not do it in the secret. I will do it openly. How many people have died in the church who should not die? Because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them. There are people who are sick today. They are dying. Some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night. They will criticize me in the day and call in the night. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. And we cut us. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are 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 mighty on your
mighty on your wall, mighty on your wall. You are mighty in this place, mighty on your wall, mighty on your wall, mighty on your wall. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, God. You are mighty on your own. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and we cast. You are mighty on your God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host. The full dimension of what he seeks to do we must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for God to find the people listen don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with God what are you doing I'm a pastor no 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 what are you doing for a living look at that stupid statement as though being a man of God is a call to they just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me, I have come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. As I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one-tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me. This mystery. This mystery. It will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. Spirit of revival. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little, people are looking, they are feeling offended for your prayer life because they are hoping you backslide so that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. Your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow. And seeing you increase is frustrating them recycling of revelations in the body of Christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh things are happening over territories we pastors are moving around with deaf ears no seeing eyes no hearing ear please we are going to pray just for one minute before I continue are we together you are going to say Lord revive my life revive my life please pray inside and outside pray revive my life this can't be it god is so much bigger than this this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. 
God is so much bigger than this. This can't be. Oh, don't deceive yourself. You know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be. My God is so much bigger than this. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. A revival is a season of reawakening. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy. A reawakening a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual inertia, inactivity in the life of a people and a territory, usually brought about by an outpouring of the Spirit. A season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness I'm going to be very fast because I want us to pray. How do I know that a territory, please help me. How do I know that a territory is under the influence of a revival? Thank you. There are certain parameters. Number one, the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for God corporately not just individually there is a restoration of god consciousness in that territory when there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow smoke anyhow live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god when they look at you today and they say where is your phone imagine someone who you ask him um what's your number and he said number that's strange right you look at the person have you been existing in this our generation imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it you know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that 
That's what happens in a revival. People are forced to talk about the move of God. The newspapers are forced to carry something. Do you know that in the days of the generals, right? The newspapers hardly discussed politics. It was in a critical way, but they were always talking. Now, we are so idle. The newspapers know if they write about us, they will not sell. So they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it. The moment they say a man of God moves in their nose, there are all these stupid people, they have come again. Look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society. They are irritated when they see our faces upon papers. In the times of Evan Roberts, people will lay hands on the magazine. Just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take People will start falling under the anointing, repenting by themselves, having visions of Jesus. Restoration of love and passion for God. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Listen. Let me tell you how the spirit of the Antichrist works in a territory. The first thing that happens is Satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one. Are you seeing that now? So, the man of God who God did business with in the last revival, usually what happens is that because of what is happening, there is what we call premature satisfaction. Little result. Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman, you are the top of the town. The, Satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it. We like names. We like titles. We like accolades. Oh, here comes the man of God. The one who raises the dead and, and, and heals the sick. And we, we pride ourselves to our detriment. We love honor. There is an obsession about it. We can do anything for it. Including backsliding. So what happens is that people keep watching. The devil keeps watching this thing. Your prayerlessness starts increasing. Your wordlessness starts increasing. But he will never strike. He will allow you. And then he will throw all kinds of persecutions. Get my teaching why revivals die. You know, all those kinds of things together. When that person is watered down, God no longer has a voice. Listen, there is a difference between God speaking to you in your secret place and God speaking to a territory. God has his mouthpieces everywhere. And then compromises begin to come in. What you would have talked about, you no longer talk about. Let me tell you how Satan destroys great men. He makes us victims of our messages. If Satan knows that God has anointed me to liberate people in an area, he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas. The reason is because when that happens, you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might. Are you seeing why you need discipline? Love for God. Love for God. Your passion, your obsession about God. When you love God, there are indices. There must be a restoration of that love. Some of you sitting down looking at me, you know how you were with God. Tell yourself the truth. Ah, Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. You see, if you love God because of husband, the day the husband comes, there's no more pursuit to love God. You see why we teach? Look, you know, I teach you a balanced teaching here. When you tie your love for God to things, as a bride, you are in for a shock. I can love God because of anointing. I hope you know that. And that anointing can lead me to go and fast because I want power. The day the power comes and I can have one or two results, 
I now know that the anointing has come. Are we together now? So no matter what I, you don't know my secret place. Is it not when I come out here? It's only God that knows whether I'm serious over what I'm saying or not. You cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of God is serious with God or not. Because you see, God is so merciful. He will always confirm his word in the midst of the people. And it usually is a justification to men of God to mean they are intact. Be careful. That God is still using you and the power of God is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing. You must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning. Lord for God. I am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for God. Lord, if you do this for me, I will come and testify. And then the other part of the story, we don't say it out, but it's in our heart. If you don't do it, I will hate you. So, it doesn't seem to happen. Oh God, no husband again. Am I the worst sinner on earth? And, and you hear all those kinds of statements. How can you tie your love for God for these kinds of things? success can distract men please hear this there are many teachings on success that i'll bring this year but let me tell you success can distract more than failure in fact failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong but success can distract whenever you begin to see your candle rise brothers and sisters that's when to catch god that's not when to leave him and say everybody behold the celebrity you will die like a chicken when satan wants to throw you he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you he throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it are you getting what i'm saying that's why certain people will not be serious with god and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody and then something will happen and crash them down love for god this night we are addressing our love for God. Lovest thou me more than this. One of the first indices of a true revival. We can look at Zaria as a city and Samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city. We can look at ABU as a campus and know whether our love for God has diminished. When somebody, let me not go ahead of myself. Number two, marks characteristics of a true revival. Number two, the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory and outpouring. Brothers and sisters, may God never make our territories without men who can speak the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The devil is out to frustrate men of God and water down people who can speak the truth. Please let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, if you are a Christian, many things must change in your life. Your lifestyle must change. Your conversation must change. Not by the energy of the flesh. There is an alignment. Your job is to do that alignment. If you do it well, the transformation must happen. There's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of Christ. To a point that somebody will have to say, I'm a Christian. For it to, Oh, you're a Christian, so you're a brother in the faith. That's a serious issue. Are we here? Uh, you, you see a Christian sit somewhere and he's talking. My goodness, you are embarrassed. Until you start talking about koinonia, for instance, and say, Ah, koinonia, you know, apostle, ah, you don't used to see me. Say, so You mean you are there? In Antioch, it was unbelievers who called people who were a reproduction of Christ. They call them Christians. Who is calling you a Christian? Can those who hate you say, I hate this person, no, but I know he's a Christian. You can't be drinking and smoking and say, it's just my body that is drinking, my spirit is okay. You are not alright. Please, let's, let's end this. You are not alright. Let me tell you the truth. No, you are not alright. You are watching porn. See, you see, let me tell you something. I'm not condemning you. Don't get me wrong. The difference between a Christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the Spirit. When, when you are sinning unconvicted, you are not in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. 
if by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit you went to your friends they reminded you of Gulda that you used to take you don't know what happened you gave into the flesh that conviction is a sign that you are in Christ that you can return and the Bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves it says and the truth is not in us he said but if we confess our sins not assume they are not there if we confess our sins not assume they are not there he says God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness have you turned that out of your Bible because it's supposed to be there the true spirit of holiness please I speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, I got to hear of course and one of the ladies said, ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in Koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how I'm doing I'm very fine very fine very fine healthy in the spirit very fine i intend to continue with god for a long time i decided that from the start of the journey we are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number. But you don't want to. So you are not serious. That's the meaning. It's as simple as that. Because you live, Jesus, I live. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you live, Jesus, I live today. I live to pray. A true spirit of revival. That you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there. When the old man wants to touch it, he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross. And you mind your business and leave that money there. Even though you needed money to eat. The spirit of holiness. Let me tell you if we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory we will never experience the fullness of god we will not see miracles and signs and wonders please let's not mock god i know what i'm saying is hard but you too you know i'm not lying you know i'm not lying don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life and the key to unholiness is carelessness Bros, you did. There's one party we're having. Say, yeah, but I don't drink against it. Just come, Jerry. Carelessness. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. Please don't feel condemned. I speak to all of us here, those who are here and those who are following us. The goal is not to condemn you, but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holiness and power go hand in hand. Don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of God. You can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of God. There has to be true holiness. There has to be true holiness. I'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, restore to my life the spirit of holiness. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Especially if you know you are affected by what I'm saying, please pray. This is a threshing floor. It's a family. Please lay your hands and say, Lord, I've been pretending as if this is not an issue. But tonight, you have brought your word out of love. Not to condemn me but to remind me that you are still waiting i receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness those outside please make sure you are laying your hand oh i separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh the impulses of the flesh the appetites of the flesh the appetite the lust and the carnality 
that destroy great men. Lord, I'm going far. The spirit of holiness must come upon my life. It must come upon my life. I receive a restoration. Lord, I used to have it, but something happened. I gave in to women. I gave in to men. I gave in to drinking. I gave in to wrong relationships. I was lonely and I allowed, I, I frustrated the manifestation. But tonight, oh God, in this place, I receive grace, grace, grace. It's not by the strength of the flesh. You can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh. Remember the cross, the place where grace comes from. Your old man has been nailed. Therefore, mortify your body. Take advantage of that grace. Let it become an instrument of righteousness. Please pray. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. God is not a native doctor. Godliness. True holiness. That's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. Help us, oh God. That in lifestyle, in character, in conversation that everything about your life there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job in school in your atmosphere not by condemning others not by reading people off that's the flesh you won't glorify God that way but that you carry a compelling presence Hallelujah. Before we continue, pray again. Say, Lord, I overcome carelessness in my life. Some of us are already at the verge. God is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling. Visiting the guy carelessly. Doing all kinds of things carelessly. You are a Christian. God is bringing this message to salvage you. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. The true spirit of holiness. No. You can't start accepting bribe. Not at this level of your life. You used to hate it before. Don't all of a sudden love bribe. You are a Christian and a Christian indeed. The spirit of God in you. And the righteousness of God. Compels you. To hate immorality not out of fear but because of your love for God and your desire to be used by him make sure it doesn't leave that's a fire you must not allow to die aside from immorality and the rest what of vain glory what of self-seeking what of vanity ambitions that are not consistent with Christ please pray this is a threshing floor tonight those of us outside, make sure you are praying. If nobody has told you there is a problem with your life, I'm telling you there is. If you are giving room to the flesh, I don't care what excuse you bring. God does not condemn, but he does not condone evil. Many of us have been praying, Lord, I want you to use me. I want to see your power. I'm showing you the secret. It overrides fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place. The third sign is massive salvation of souls. Genuine salvation genuine salvation genuine salvation it's not enough for people to come and be saved they must be saved well well to stay well and grow massive salvation that is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival listen 
if there is no true passion for souls in your heart something is wrong let me prove to you that it's unnatural how many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident nobody asks who is a christian there or who is a muslim everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying every time you see sinners i want you to imagine an accident scene imagine a fatal accident what would you do there are some of us we have roommates we have people in our workplaces it's until maybe three months to leave zaria that they stumble across koinonia and they come and find you there and you see them crying and say this is what you have been enjoying say i'm too fine how can i tell this guy to come how can i lead him to christ massive salvation by the way the lord while i was preparing this the lord gave me an instruction i'll say during the announcement but then let me say it again by god's grace next friday's miracle service you're coming with two sets of requests the first is the names of your family members and loved ones those who you have tried to get them born again come and watch god will do for them this year you will watch what god will do he will surprise you i, I will I, please you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it write it down write no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledged god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ when Saul landed on the floor, he knew that this was God. See, God knows where to touch the arrogance of any man. Are we together? So you're going to bring one prayer request, your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones, but please, write it down. Not names of enemies, and that's not what I'm asking you. Names of sinners, sinners, people who you know you are agreeing with God. Let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of God on your life passionate about where his heart is are we together if i'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate because that will be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say, God, let's hurry up. To you, it's not a big deal. You've forgotten that he saved you. You've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again. I remember one of our ladies who years ago, they were all unbelievers, you know, non-Christians now, I mean. And God, I mean, saved her. She became saved, I think, while on campus. And we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings. God touched her brother. I think God touched her mother. Three of them were all saved, remaining the father. The father was a hardened. He wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom. We told her, keep praying. Just don't say God will not touch them. Keep praying. One day, she received a call. He was saved in living faith. When he was saved, I was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car is i don't know it's like his family members they drove down and say which depression are you in that would have made you to become a christian ah you will see salvations that will scare you the day you go and look at somebody in your family you will think it's a mistake you just yeah, you say what are you doing say i'm praying in tongues say are you joking say I, i'm a sanctuary keeper i'm, I'm i've i've left the world since I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem ministry. I said, it's a lie. The one day he called me and we were talking. We just spoke and he said, I said, tell me it's a joke. Tell me it's a joke. These guys were the fence jumpers. These guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning. And now he has been changed. Please don't conclude on any man. Don't conclude on any man. That roommate you are seeing, you know every Friday she's not around till Monday morning. Wait and see what God does with her. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. 
there's nobody on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people, as I'm talking now, there are many people who respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God. Don't say you love God. When a guy loves a lady, he can have 5,000 in his account. He will withdraw it. Leave the minimum balance. And tell her, eat. She say, I don't want to stress your body. Say, no, 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 don't eat. It's me that is paying for this thing. But when it comes to souls, we are afraid. Well, someone is telling you, I, I would love God, but he's giving flimsy excuses. Why don't you tell the person, two of us, let's climb bike and come. Are you that passionate and unembarrassed? Do that and see the way God wipes your tears. See, these are kingdom keys. There are no shortcuts to this thing. Souls. When I pray many times, I say, oh God, use koinonia as a platform to save sinners you see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming i tell you give them chance to come i remember somebody uh, I, I i don't know exactly i think he was he's, he's an imam or something one of these these uh, very strong guys he was seated outside when i was teaching the reality of heaven and hell this was somebody who is learned you understand what i'm saying and he sat down outside and was thinking and while I was teaching, he saw a vision of Jesus outside. And he got born again. The day he came for counseling, I could not believe it. Ushers, I think one or two people. There's one of our brothers in Ushers too who was like that. Now totally transformed, serving the Lord, working in the ocean department. Who told you God cannot save them? Your stubborn father, your stubborn mother, your missing brother who comes back once in three months, I'm telling you when the power of God lands on them. We don't know the power that raised Christ from the dead. That's why. Because all we are teaching about in church is money. We don't know the power. If a power can raise a dead body, is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change? Him? Number four. Let's run. The fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of god now please hear me i say this sincerely from the depth of my heart and i i mean no condemnation with this but when as men of god we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no i'm like that me god gave me this i don't believe in that concept i know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether god is there but brothers and sisters people must be saved and they must have passion for the house of god because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom the church is god's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom it's not enough for people to be born again that's why we co we collect their details we send them text messages and follow them up what's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers once in a while you send them a scripture maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say maybe it's a scripture love not the world looks at your phone looks at that bottle and he knows and the spirit of god you have given him access to kick in and he drops it never to pick it again there's no support structure in the body of christ to help sinners stand once they are born again, we say, okay, now just find your way back to your seat and the Lord help you. That's why when people get born again, we recommend to them. Because the ministry is still growing, we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do. Right? We recommend them to go to the prayer department. At least for one month. Even if they don't intend to be members. Just to join. That's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people. That's why pray for us pray for this ministry that god will take us to the next level fast and you will see the things that are in store for the body of christ passion for the house of god 
when coming to the house of god hear me let me use koinonia this is our platform when coming to koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance please i want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life are we together now yeah you just sit down and say kai this thing self to six i will even sit down outside it's like it's cold abi those things are indices it's a reaction to something already happening in your spirit I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The, the scripture, the anchor scripture that the Lord gave us, remember the scripture, it says, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted and all nations shall flow. They will say to themselves, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the mount of God. For there he will teach us his ways. He said, for out of Zion shall proceed the Lord. Passion passion there are people you see them january koinonia and then later on maybe when result is out or something it just coincides with a miracle service they now drag themselves and come and sit outside and of all the prophecies that are coming they are just waiting for when they talk about academics the moment they say for your academics they now they are now invited immediately they finish they run that game you are playing with god you will not win praise the lord I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small. What we are doing in the church is sheep stealing. What did I call it? Sheep stealing. When you steal a sheep, a sheep is not a fool. It grew somewhere. Eventually, ah, you see, I am the good shepherd. My sheep here know my voice. I know. We, we steal sheep. We are, we are trying to steal choices, quality. So if Sam, please stand up, Sam. If Sam is a millionaire, I want that kind of sheep around because I know the relevance of the sheep to that pasture or that place, that attitude. Every time we see unbelievers, you see somebody with his draggy jeans, you know this guy, you even need to support him back. We don't like those kind of souls. The person calls you daddy, say, who is your, I'm not your father, I don't know you. I just got you born again, please look for somebody else. These are the kinds of, ah, this is my son, you are, I'm well pleased. That carnal attitude, are you getting what I'm saying? So, when, if that's why I say it to the glory of God, and you know here, I know no man after the flesh. I will not go to anybody's house and say, um, you are a senator, uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry, we, we, have, we, we want to buy a bus. God will use people. There is nobody that I will reject on grounds of anything. Whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. We don't love the sheep and they know they know where they know the type of sheep we love when you see a beautiful lady say you are you are my daughter daughter how are you and you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry she's wondering what do you like me or the beauty see members are not idiots they know pastors who are serious they know they know pastors who are playing games you just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies. These are the, this is what we do that destroy us. Are we together now? Or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that. And oh no, there is a place for honor. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying, this thing we are doing is too much. It's sheep stealing. How many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints? The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a, a, remember the story of a shepherd, right? 99 sheep. One got missing. What did he do to the 99? They were all right. So he left them and went, still not minding if he loses the 99, went to look for that one. Is that our attitude? When somebody comes to stand, you are looking whether he's holding an envelope. If it's not, you look at his shoe, look at his watch and say, let's pray. Father, help this person and you are praying. Don't waste my time here. But when somebody comes, package, you are like, what are they, what, let me, let me know the needs. If you are a pastor here, please do this thing truly. 
God is going to judge us, not in a condemning way. We are going to be accountable for this. Act as if there is an authority above you. Members know. Let me tell you, there is no member who will see a man of God talking like I'm talking, who will not love him and be open to him. Do you know why many of our members in different churches, I'm speaking apostolically, there are many people listening. Do you know why many members, they know their pastors don't like them. They know it. They can't truly call this person my pastor, my father, somebody I can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money. They want what will make them proud. By God's grace, we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here. No matter what you have done, we we'll enter the hole with you and come out together. A good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy. He lays down his life for his sheep. Passion for the house of God. Number five, quickly. Passion for the word. Indices that measure a revival in a place. Passion for the word. Passion for prayer. Passion for a life of worship. You can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word. Jordan Bookstore is there. He will tell you. I know that people love the word in this place. I'm even careful to announce certain books because you announce it by tomorrow. There are people who are already there getting books, studying, buying concordance. Truly, let me tell you, I'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of God. When I started out with God, sometimes you will come and see different kinds of Bibles. Our money was spent buying Bible, not just to look for Rema. We didn't have the privilege to learn Greek and Hebrew, so you listen. We buy Bible on tape bombard it put it in your ears i had one rechargeable then all kinds of songs all kinds of songs in the night you play it but right now what do we do with our money we don't do anything for the kingdom you buy one small bible that looks like a phone you just carry you cannot even see what is there and you don't care because you don't read it you don't read it obviously you don't read it please Let's take this thing of God seriously. When do you close yourself and study? Not just devotional, where you read fast. As you are praying, you are on your way going. Oh, I see this, uh, God. And then scripture for reading, Luke chapter this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. You just drop it and run. Ask the person what he's running towards. He will tell you he's looking for money or a meaningful life. And we have left the word of life. I found your word and I did eat them. And they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Passion for the world. Passion for worship. Many of us don't worship. We pray and we study the word. There is a place for worship in your spiritual growth. If you don't have worship tapes. Now, technology has made it easy. Put these things. I have a selection in my phone. I call them deep worship. There's one called encounter. That one, when, when I'm high in the spirit, I just switch. Not all songs minister to me at the same level. I have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them. Has it happened to you like that? Yeah. You put the songs. Don't just say Christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs. No, no, no. Separate this thing and take God seriously. You have a selection. The moment you just hear a Christian one, there is another one diluting your spirit. And then midway, after you enjoy it more, just to satisfy the guilt, you now quickly run to Don Muen. Don't, please. Saints of God, I admonish you in the name of Jesus Christ. Guard your heart with all diligence. Your destiny depends on it. You will never find one on Christian song in my I'm not one of those people who say, look, we need to work with technology. I'm not a fool. Technology has failed us. Many things, governments have failed us. It's obvious they are ignorant. We used to say it before, but there was no room to expose it. Right now, it's clear that the government of nations are clueless. Come to the kingdom and mend the ways of God. The years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit. We are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now. A time will come when those who had that oil, they will not have anything again satan does not give anything free have you not learned a day will come the day he meets all the people celebrating him they will pay with their life 
Satan never gives you a thing free. He will give you, you will think he's dash, but his business. He will come in the future for everything. Anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death. The end is death. Create an atmosphere of worship. Create an atmosphere of the word. Get Bible. I have, I have a, a very beautiful software that I got. Just the words of Jesus. They just pick them through the gospels. Just everywhere Jesus spoke. Just the words of Jesus. Always beautiful. With worship playing in the background like this. I tell you, you will wash your spirit. You know how you work. When you listen, you will know you are getting clean through the word. The word cleanses. Cleanses your mind. Sometimes I sleep and let it keep playing. And I have visions and encounters. You wake up shaking under the presence of God. You create an atmosphere that cannot be denied. This is how it happens. What if I have roommates that are not serious? That's why you have a phone. You cry to God for a good phone. He gave it to you. Use it well. Use it well. Not just for sending text messages. Use it well. How much does it take to download? I mean, there are Android devices with one, two thousand naira. Don't say I cannot afford it. Your hair, your shoulder, your knees, your toes. Look at all you have used your money that God gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone. Remember, your spirit is better than your body. Invest in it first. Number. Let's hurry up. We're almost done. When there is a true revival in a place, there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement. Listen, revival affects the quality of the living of the people within there. Don't think when you subscribe to the things of God and a revival comes, um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer. No, when there is a real revival, the quality of the life of God's people is improved. Almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival. It's just that the historians remove the God factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something. A lot of the people who made strange discoveries, they did them coinciding with periods of revival. And most of those people were either Christians or came from Christian families. When the spirit of revival is upon you, you will be rich. You will be blessed. Because the presence of God will compel favor upon your life. When a ministry is under that kind of open heavens, they will enjoy supplies. People will do well. People will get jobs. There will be marriages. There will be blessings. There will be children. There will be all kinds of breakthroughs. Don't make it look as if when you seek God, you will be in trouble. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33 tells us. He said, and his righteousness, if you do that properly, he says, all other things shall be added to you as well amen seven when there is the true spirit of revival in a place there is an outburst of miracles signs and wonders oh this is very important there's gonna be a great awakening there's gonna be a great revival in our land there's gonna be a great awakening and everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies in this place. That's what is going to happen to many of you this night. Koinonia remains a place of healing, a place of miracles. Because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power. They say, look, um, um, healing. When they say healing, they are quick to say, no, 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 emotional healing. Please, physical healing. People are sick. Their bodies are sick. Are we together now? Yes, there's a place for emotional healing. But we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not. If somebody is blind and is healed, he is healed. Is that not true? We must contend for grace even in this dimension. Say amen. And may it happen through your hands.
there is a joy when God uses you there is a joy when God does things around you but when it happens through your hands it's a blessing I trust that God will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people that they note you and say ah I I came to Amaka and she prayed with me and doors just opened great testimony Ella agreed with me she prophesied something over my life oh I met Aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened say no because you came for koinonia you must believe God in your life hallelujah miracles signs and wonders any pastor in this day and age who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews i guarantee you any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous people are not looking if they are looking for where to watch film their silver bed there are many their cinema and all kinds of places people don't come to church to watch movies they come to church because they have real problems is that not true they need the power of god head on in their lives lastly the final index that shows that the atmosphere is under the influence of revival is impartation of gifts graces and mantles impartations see revivals are times where god recruits people into his army most people stepped into the call of god upon their life at revivals when people are just praying non-stop for a while the holy ghost separate me paul and Barnabas. there has to be release of mantles graces impartations it happens during revivals there will be almost no impartations when revival is not in a place remember a man in the bible called agabus he had daughters and all of them were prophets there are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children god knows my children god knows before they arrive there will be a special recording waiting for them as soon as they arrive straight on before the nonsense that society brings this and that you are stupid you are foolish no. they will receive something they will start having visions and encounters of jesus that's why i respect and i want us to appreciate them i respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children let them sleep and sleep in the presence of god it was in the presence of god samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of god even if you must sleep do it in the presence of god because although your body is sleeping your spirit is receiving impartations of mantles and graces that's what is happening to some of you some of you in the nearest future god will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing i'm doing right now when you stand one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down and you will tell them once upon a time i sat down quietly i remember when i used to go for meetings and sit down and i hear the man of god say out of this place god will raise great men and people are shouting amen some are sleeping some are playing some are not serious and i just sit down there and i say really i could imagine the angels and all these people saying young man pay attention there are destinies tied to you very quickly what is the price what is the requirement for revival and we're going to pray i'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done sorry i may not have time to read the scriptures is god blessing you tonight the first price requirement for true revival not assumed revival true revival is consecration the first price you want to host the glory of god the first requirement is consecration media help us with one scripture that i found very interesting isaiah 52 verse 11 i'll i'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us second timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure it says having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his he says and let every man that named the name of christ depart 
from iniquity iniquity is not just sin fornication and the rest no it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh let's read this scripture together one to read depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence touch no unclean thing it says go ye out from the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the lord those that host precious things from god he says depart depart ye consecration consecration very very important set apart for his service set apart the bible says there is no man who warreth and tangles himself we want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time it doesn't happen no consecration consecration is understood when you look at monks and sisters in a convent you know that that dedication they have decided that they are not going to get married for the purpose of their service to the kingdom you must dedicate your whole life some of us have given god half of our lives some of us gave god everywhere excluding your head and your thinking some of us gave god every no 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 you have to give him everything you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty O morning star you truly are number two the second prize is hunger and thirst you want to see revival in your life there must be a hunger for it isaiah 44 verse 3 and psalm 63 verse 1 and 2 i'm giving this to us very quickly because of time he will pour water upon him that is thirsty him that is what there must be a thirst i will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring do you have that hunger i'm telling you i have an insatiable hunger to see revival in my life i want to see the revival power of god in my life that everywhere i go to regions to minister i leave a deposit of the spirit of revival in that place hunger and thirst psalm 63 verse 1 and 2 he says oh lord you are my god early will i seek you say my soul pants after you right in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary do you have that hunger and thirst to see revival in your life it was men like john knox that prayed and said lord give me scotland or i die we quote it and have no passion at all number three the price for revival prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fasting prolonged seasons you don't pray for one week and see revival there are women who prayed for their children for 20 years non-stop before the fire of god fell on them prolonged seasons that's why it's important to be consistent in your prayer life and please i talk to everybody here inside and outside if your prayer life has nose dived we welcome you to join the prayer department on tuesdays even if it is for one week there is fire burning in that place i tell you join and refire yourself prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fastings listen fasting is a powerful spiritual principle you don't do it out of religion or out of fear however it it energizes your spirit and promotes you to have 
faith in God, really unbelief is what it challenges so that the conviction about the reality of God is crystallized in your heart. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 it was while they were in the upper room praying that the Holy Ghost fell. Acts 13 verse 2 it was while they worshipped and prayed and ministered unto the Lord with fasting. The Bible spoke I mean God spoke to them and said separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. Number four the price for the word of God intense study of the word with a view to living by it not just for head knowledge not like the people the Bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth intense study of the word of God Finally, the last price for revival is the sacrifice of time. The sacrifice of time. You want to see God's might in your life, you must give him time. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on you. You're not going to rush God and see his glory. The proof of passion is the investment of time. Anything you love, you have time for it. Please give God time. Remember I told us last week, you must give God time give God one hour don't give God two hours there are times where you have to dedicate a whole day and just say Lord this is for you a time of worship and prayer let his presence host you that day you are dedicating it just for watching movies that will build your life Bible stories watching messages listening to teachings worship prayer you must even be fasting you can just focus this day is on to you imagine if someone walked up to you and said i'm dedicating my tomorrow for you no matter how antisocial you are even if you say no thank you you will be happy that somebody can sacrifice his day when you come to somebody and he tells you look i don't have time i'm busy sometimes you feel bad you feel that ah, this person doesn't value me so much that's what happens when we come to God and just worship. God, are you aware that I have problems? Okay, I'm aware. Do something about them. I'm on my way. Lord, I give you time. My life is measured in time. And if I give God my life, he must be Lord of my time too. He's Lord of my time. At this level of your life, the time you are spending visiting people and, and gossiping they are tired of you why don't you come to the one who is not tired of you they don't just have the courage to tell you they are really tired of you you are going every time eating disturbing bringing stories that are unnecessary at a point you now lie on it because you have to keep moving why, I mean, why don't you come to somebody who he never says change to come he says my presence will change you I give God time. Anyone who knows me knows that I give God time. Check the amount of time you give to God. Now, of course, if you are working, you don't have all the time. You can't get up doing your job and just shut down that day. No, 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 no. There are times, there are weekends, there are holidays, there are special times you can just say, Lord, you know that it's my desire to spend this much time with you. But now that I've had this opportunity, I run to you. I run to you. We don't know what happens in the presence of God when we give him time. When the glory of God comes into your life, he brings beauty. Beauty and glory. Your life will remain a wonder to people if you can be planted by that riverside. That riverside. Hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes 
in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Oh, holy, holy. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 14 begin our reading from verse 6 Acts 14 verse 6 Hallelujah We've been teaching and bringing us into the understanding that we are spiritual people Hallelujah The Bible teaches of three classes of people One he calls the natural man now please look up the natural man the bible says is that man that does not understand the things of the spirit why because the holy spirit does not live in him hallelujah and if the holy spirit does not live in him the things of the spirit appear as foolishness are you following me now and so the natural man is the one who is not regenerated not born again has not had any encounter with the spirit of god the one we call the unbeliever then the bible talks to us about another class of people and he calls them the carnal ones the word carnal doesn't just mean worldly it means one who is ruled by his senses are you following me now one whose flesh is the governing factor in his life so one who is led by the things he or she sees and hears and your sensory perception bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 1 he says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit he said for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had set me free from the law of sin and death he said for what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh so the law weak in the flesh and so those who are governed by their senses they are governed by the limitations of this realm the things that they feel their perception their reality is based on their sensory perception bible calls them the carnal ones hallelujah and it's religion that brings carnality when people have knowledge a form of godliness but deny the power and then the bible talks about a third class of people called the spiritual ones the spiritual ones who they are the ones who by reason of an experiential walking with the holy spirit over time have come to a point where they have exalted the presence of god and the word of god his word and his voice above and beyond their senses they have come to a, an experiential reality where the word of god becomes the governing factor of their lives they are led by the spirit they are led by the word the word of God paints the picture of their new reality. Their senses has lost the ability to draw a picture of their future and their destiny. They only see things from God's perspective. Let me tell you something about perception in the spirit. In a physical realm, when you talk to people, they speak to you based on their level of perception how they see reality are you following me now for instance in geography basic geography they teach us that the sun rises from where the east and sets where in the west from this plane of reality that is true is that correct but when you go outside of earth you will know that that reality no longer exists is that correct based on a new plane that you are standing on you see that the sun is not rising and setting is static and the planets are revolving around it hallelujah and so we must get to that point where we become spiritual people not just in word 
that the Holy Spirit leads us to a plane in the spirit where we stand from God's perspective and we begin to view life not from the perspective of education and government and the policies of men that come with their frailties and limitations that we stand from his plane and begin to judge things spiritually hallelujah the bible says that the spiritual man is judged of no man because he lives by the word he lives by the spirit so god is helping us so that we will walk in the spirit galatians chapter 5 verse 16 so then walk in the spirit and ye shall not gratify the desires of the flesh it says for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh lusted after the spirit and both of them are consistently under contention and so it tells us that the way forward is to walk in the spirit to live in the spirit to come to that point where we not only function as intellectual people but we function as spiritual men hallelujah thank you jesus acts chapter 14 verse 6 and they were aware of it and fled to lystra and derby cities of Ly lyconia and unto the region that lieth round about seven and there they preached the gospel verse 8 he says and there sat a certain man at lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from birth who never walked the same had paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed now the bible uses a very interesting word he says that paul was preaching and he saw a man who was impotent and while paul was preaching he turned and he perceived in his spirit that that man had faith that was able to cause him to be healed hallelujah spiritual perception the art of knowing and relating with your spiritual senses hallelujah when you get born again let me tell you something to be spiritually dead does not just mean that the holy spirit is away from your life it means that your organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the spirit have been deadened are you following me now the bible makes us to understand that god designed man to be able to function both in the realm of the spirit and to function in this realm are you following me now the bible says that god made adam man dust and breathed upon that man the breath of life the spirit of god and that man became a living soul capable of relating with both realms are you following me now now when the holy spirit left man what are, it wasn't just that man lost righteousness but he came to a point where he was spiritually dead because the holy spirit left him his organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the spirit became dead are you following me now that was the beginning of what we call experiment a true spiritual man does not experiment Adam named the animal without making any reference to any biological material the word name the animal does not mean he called lion lion is science that called lion lion Adam gave lion its identity hallelujah and so when man fell he no longer was able to normally relate with the realm of the spirit and interact his sense of hearing seeing perceiving and knowing can i tell you something in biology they teach us that we have how many senses let's do a quick review name them one two so uh, what is what's the third one hallelujah basic biology now we are taught that we have five senses hallelujah but in the realm of the spirit you have more than five senses are you following me now I, i've read books about spiritual senses and people say you oh, no 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 
there are certain manifestations in the spirit that do not have an explanation in this realm for instance what ability of the spirit do you use to know things you need a mind to know things in this realm in the realm of the spirit if you touch the flower in the realm of the spirit you don't know it by studying it you have the feeling of becoming that flower and instantly you have every knowledge that you require about that flower are you following me now in the realm of the spirit there is no time and there is no distance are you following me now these are spiritual realities you, you do not measure time you you cannot measure time time is irrelevant in the realm of the spirit this is why god says a thousand years is like a day before him so as far as he's concerned the promises he made in your life he still made them today and while you are grumbling and complaining and say lord five years god says this is you are talking from a fleshly point of view when you rise and become spiritual you will know that it's still one day god is still faithful hallelujah because he functions from the realm of eternity ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 the bible says that he makes all things beautiful in his time and he has put eternity in the heart of man and so the realm of the spirit is an interesting realm in the realm of the spirit there are no secrets are you following me now no secrets if we're all to be caught up in the spirit right now you need to confess and repent and roll on the floor because there are no secrets in the spirit that's why the bible calls him the father of light in whom there is no shadow of turning all things lay bare in the realm of the spirit and every time you begin to that's where we get the concept of what we call imagination comes from the hebrew word yazar the ability to conceive things until they crystallize and become a reality in the spirit that's how demons and all of these mind readers and sorcerers are able to tap into the spirit you see there are several planes in the spirit the realm of the spirit is not heaven the realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment that is real just like this are you following me now so when you get caught up there are many people who are smiling they've been caught up into the realm of demons and sorcerers astrologers mind readers and all of these people they function from the realm of the spirit that's why they can tell you certain things about your life because what you call future when you go to the realm of the spirit you find out that it's not future it's only future according to this realm that's why god gave us expo he says you want to reign in life see it in the spirit you will always be ahead in this life and then you reproduce it in this realm if there is victory in the spirit then there must be victory in this realm that's why the kings every time they would go to war they would call the priests and the prophets see in the spirit and tell us are we wasting our time or oh, this is a victorious battle and the prophets will come and say i have seen it there is victory hallelujah but the society has trained us to be carnal people who walk after our senses and get whipped and punished by the vicissitudes of life hallelujah the realm of the spirit is very powerful one time i was caught up in the spirit and i looked at people and all i was seeing was light they were emitting different different um magnitudes and colors of light and the holy spirit spoke to me and he told me this light is the degree and the depth of christ that has been formed in the people hallelujah and your strength is gauged in the spirit by the degree of light that you emit that's what we do in quantum physics when you want to know things about elements you expose them to light and they reveal certain things where did they learn that principle from why do you think quantum physics is hard because it's an attempt to study realities that can only be explained in the spirit don't blame yourself because your lecturer called you stupid he has not yet come to the realm of the spirit to understand how hard things are you should clap for me come on i qualify to work as a counselor hallelujah there are many of us who when we get born again and get filled with the holy spirit we are not taught how to begin to interact with the atmosphere of the spirit and if you are not taught you can 
get into error because suddenly you find out that your organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the spirit are coming alive and then you do not know how to navigate through the path of the spirit and then we begin to hear voices and have expressions that we cannot explain and this is why this teaching is preparing us are you getting blessed the bible says paul was preaching and suddenly there was a signal in his spirit man the bible calls it perception the ability to perceive realities hallelujah when you get born again and the holy spirit comes to live in you when you're filled with the holy ghost and you begin to pray in tongues you see when for many of us who have been taught that this tongues thing is only raising pentecostals you are cheating yourself there are certain levels of light and glory and power you can never walk in god gave you the blessings of the gift of these tongues to cause you to activate your organs of expression and interaction in the spirit suddenly you begin to pray in tongues and while you are praying in tongues suddenly you feel a cool sensation and you cannot explain you cannot account for a few minutes later your body is burning what language is being communicated suddenly your eyes and your hands it looks like there is a particular operation of the spirit that causes only your eyes to begin to burn lord what are you saying what spiritual language is this what organ of expression is being activated in the spirit and suddenly you are praying and sometimes you have to turn because you sense you are not alone in that place of prayer and then you cannot even understand your organs of interaction with the spirit they are getting enlightened and built and activated by the power of the spirit and you begin to pray and there is a manifestation and you begin to hear all kinds of sounds sometimes you hear voices choir singing and angel manifestations you feel oil crowns on your head all kinds of things fire sometimes you are praying and in less than one minute you sit down and fall asleep and you cannot even explain what happened it's important that we train ourselves to understand these things because these are the weapons of victory in the spirit and if you do not understand you will feel that the holy spirit is not leading you are you getting blessed tonight thank you lord jesus christ perceptions in the spirit there are many of us who pray and suddenly you go blank for a few minutes then you come back and you cannot even explain what has happened you just know that in that split seconds when you start writing what you saw it will take an hour and you're saying what is this in less than a minute in earthly time you got realities that will take you an hour and religious people will say well just mind your business with this your things you are doing but the holy spirit is calling you to understand the atmosphere of the spirit when danger is about to happen to someone somehow there is an ability of the spirit that is at work in you and when you train yourself to understand these perceptions you will be able to flow as a king in this life and in this realm you will never be taken aback so when someone comes and wants to do business with your father the moment you want to move there it comes again the spirit your organs of interaction in the spirit no matter what evidences you have there is are you listening to me if you do not realize that you are a spiritual man you will be cheated in this life because you will miss out on certain things there there is a way that the holy spirit communicates to me every time I'm, I'm entering new seasons in my life can i tell you something there is no hard and fast rule into walking in these things it is a personal product of your dealings with the spirit that's why you cannot just write book and a book and say every time you feel it is the healing anointing no sir it's true that the healing anointing is associated with heat and all of this you can't just generalize it you will lead people into error because as you stay with the holy spirit he begins to teach you what he will reveal as his impressions he will teach you his language and his code that is customized to just you and when you stand to minister that's how sometimes we minister 
it doesn't mean we always see visions there are times that i'm moving and there is an operation and there is perception in my spirit and i know not just that the anointing is there but the kind of anointing that is there and you don't waste your time trying to heal headache when there is an anointing to heal cancer and then you keep struggling until your spiritual antenna keeps navigating and suffering then when you finally hit it then there looks like a breakthrough have you seen people in meetings who suffer and do every spiritual gymnastic they don't seem to connect then it's like an antenna while they are tuning somehow whether by mistake or by mercy they just hit it suddenly you begin to see that people get blessed and instead of the person to go back and say lord let it not happen again the person laughs and says, wow that's a powerful meeting open your eyes open your ears and soon you understand that the lord is here open your eyes open your ears then you'll understand that the lord is here there are some of us who begin to pray and then you find out that you begin to have strange experiences where you can begin to talk about someone and you are not really seeing any vision in the spirit yet you can describe the person with accuracy and detail and his clothes you don't know where you are seeing from you just know that you are talking there is someone wearing a blue dress standing you weave your hair how you are getting it you cannot even understand you are not really seeing any vision people think you are seeing a picture you are this there is an agency in the spirit that cannot be explained in this realm but it's a tool for interaction then you are able to relate with the spiritual atmosphere and then you speak with accuracy and precision organs of expression in the spirit as I'm speaking to you, God is activating these things because He's giving you explanations. Then, at certain times, you're just moving, and these perceptions do you realize every single one of us in this place? The Holy Spirit has been communicating to you through this means. It's only that we have not been trained to understand that these are the promptings and the communications of the Spirit. This is the first step into the manifestation of the prophetic that you can understand your organs of interaction in the spirit there are times you sit down and many of us suddenly begin to see flashes of lightning in different colors and you do not realize that what you are attempting to see is the manifestation of angels you just think you are seeing ribbons moving around who told you they are called ribbons they appear and move so fast the bible says he maketh his angels wings he uses the word pneuma wind hallelujah spirit of the lord many times when you're standing and the lord wants to call you to a place where he will reveal secrets to you there are ways he begins to lure you but when your organs of expressions are deadened and they are not trained to understand that the lord is beckoning on you the man called bishop oyedeko said he was moving and the lord told him go to a solitary place i want to speak to you how many of us have missed out on secrets that would have been communicated unto us if we only understood that these operations of the spirit were languages paul said there are voices we have been trained you see in this realm if, if you do not rise above this realm you will try to relate with the spirit using your knowledge of this realm there are more organs of interaction in the spirit than we have in this realm if you can believe that that's the first step to begin to walk with the spirit the concept of hearing god and walking and flowing with the spirit have never been a difficult phenomenon we are just we just we we have not been trained to understand i've said it here let me tell you something about the voice of god now i'm going to shock many of you do you realize that god does not speak what you hear that you think is his english it's not english the language of god is light are you listening to me hmm. strong presence in this place the language of god is light 
I've explained this, but let me show you. I'll prove it to you scientifically. If you want to send a text message from your phone to this person's phone, what happens? You type the message. When you send it, it goes as what? Help me, please. It goes as what? Do you see it? Do you realize that the text you send flows from the realm of the spirit to get to the recipient? We live in the spirit every day and we call it science. The moment is in the spirit, no time and no distance. That's why I can get to London in that instance. Are you following me? You can stay and send, press and send instantly. Someone at the North Pole will receive an alert. Let me tell you something. Follow me. Once it's in the realm of the spirit, time and distance does not exist. But watch this. When it gets to the person's phone, when it gets to the person's phone, listen. The phone has been configured to interpret and convert what that light is saying into a language that you can understand. That's why Russians use handset. Indonesians use handset. Are you following me now? So when, how many of you have received text messages and you just saw jugular jugular nonsense there? Because your phone cannot interpret. Maybe it's an MMS, but your phone has not been configured to interpret MMS message. And so the the words in your phone will try to downgrade what that light is trying to say as best as it can and then you begin to see arrows and star it's attempting to tell you there is a message upgrade your phone and then you will see it perception is in the spirit for many times when he beckons on us and he's speaking the insufficiency of the word of God frustrates the manifestation of his voice in your spirit man. And then you are not able to understand what he's saying. That's why people receive half revelations, part revelations. And sometimes God steps in by his mercy to give you pictures and give you words. Just a phrase of a song or use the face of somebody that can be a symbol of what he's trying to say that your spirit cannot receive. spiritual man able to interact with the realm of the spirit when you understand spiritual perception it will be your key to walking away from danger many people suffer because they are trying to heal the sick the bible says that paul was preaching he didn't just blindly get up and say i have faith i'm a man of god he was waiting for these promptings of the spirit. That's why sometimes you see us just worship. I say, what are these people doing? We are waiting. There is a language. We don't just function foolishly. And then suddenly you hear us say, cancer. Cancer. Why not headache? Cancer. Because over time, when you stay with the spirit, he trains you. As you build yourself in the place of prayer, this is one of the things that happens. Your organs of expression. There is stamina in your spirit. Your ability to understand and interpret the language of the spirit. And then every time he gives you those promptings again, then you know that this is what the spirit is saying. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? I know you've heard this song. Just listen to me. How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly like the eagles when you don't know the wind his power at work in you is changing everything in obedience to God. there are many of us who were told days before the arm robbers came to your house you knew it the holy spirit kept beckoning on you but because we are not able to understand the promptings of the spirit there are many times you sit down in the car to go to go somewhere and the holy spirit begins to communicate to you when you understand this you will reign in this life are you getting blessed tonight you better be interested in what i'm saying so when you pray there is a rising your spirit is rising in science when when water gains energy what happens it changes state from ice to liquid to vapor that's what happens to your spirit man when you gain energy there, there comes a change of state and you keep rising to the plane and the mountain of god 
and when you allow the holy spirit to train you sufficiently you see a list of job offers and instantly you know which one to go to. because every time you lay your hands to pray he begins to lead you friends i hope you know that this is what they do to occultic people the moment you are initiated he's not initiated i'm using him as an example the moment you are initiated what happens they come to you in the night they are attempting to activate your organs of expression in the spirit and they begin to show you things that you have never seen suddenly you see a lizard then you see a picture you think is a dream and it disappears and suddenly you see some people bring you and then for many people they say a a matured man like this <laughs> they say traveling in what granite seed or something now they are frustrating science to make the spirit alive in you that cannot be understood scientifically after a while you conceive it as a reality and you begin to walk in that light the grandmother in your village sits down and just perceives that your brother is going to excel and through that perception they use incantation to confirm it and sits down there with her old stick and shouts and says come back to the village and die and she goes to bed and the senseless carnal minded businessman is meandering the streets of london and for reasons you cannot account for you will take a flight and come back and then you come and die in the village we are not just raising men of understanding but men of power let me tell you some of you will rise tonight with an anger because suddenly you will see that so this has been the promptings of the spirit sometimes when you're sleeping immediately your your peace is taken away and it says get up many of you are waiting for get up g-e-t-i-t -E wait there until your destiny catches fire and you get up and then you pray for five minutes and convince yourself you are done you pray till the promptings change and sometimes it will take days for it to change are you following me now thank you jesus there are times that suddenly for no reason you find the holy spirit calling you and he says three days i want you to pray at least three to four hours three days he's pressing up your spirit for something to come and then when you hear it your spirit is alive you who would have fallen on this news you stand and you say no i know god is alive stamina has been built because of the ability to perceive spiritual things hallelujah paul was preaching and while he was preaching his organs of expression in the spirit his sense of perception sight and sound by reason of praying in the spirit had been activated and he kept looking at that man waiting to perceive the moment he perceived it said that's it stand up and he arose god's generals it was said that there was one of them who had an angel who would always come and stand and if that angel didn't come he will never do anything he would just be worshiping and the people say this guy don't waste our time he says i cannot do anything according to the training that was given to me it was said to me that when i see this angel it may not be so for you see be careful when you read books because many people take their spiritual experiences and build doctrines out of it you are not permitted to build a doctrine out of your experience you can share it to guide people but the word of god is the more sure word of prophecy so i can share with you how i flow in the spirit i can share with you how i know that this is what god is saying i should do i can show it i can you see that the prophets in the bible operated at different levels and frequencies of perception ezekiel would be caught up in the spirit then he saw the bones and instantly he knew they were very dry let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall 
let it cover all the earth let it cover all the Let it cover all the earth. Hallelujah. Interactions of the spirit. Your ability to perceive realities in the spirit. When your organs of expression in the spirit are trained. Let me tell you something you will command power in this realm so if you are not a man and a woman of prayer prayer is not an option are you listening to me it's not it's not something for men of god you you want to flow in power no you've got to be men and women who understand how to navigate the path of the spirit there are many times you enter to pray the moment you shut yourself while you are going, ba ba ba, God said, "Ah, I didn't bring you here to pray. Just sit down. Take your Bible and sit down quietly." Or for some of you, God will say, "Just be walking up and down. Don't pray. Just keep moving. Just stroll." And people see you hold your notebook and you're just moving, and they say, "Oh God, I'm saying you should pray. You are eyeing me." God is saying, "Just keep flowing." And while you're flowing, suddenly you begin to sense the changes in the atmosphere of the spirit. You cannot explain it in this realm. But you know that this is a journey in the spirit you may not understand but you know you know that you are going somewhere you are not just moving left and right you are climbing planes in the spirit when you get to that place where god wants you to get to he will say now son begin to pray and i will show you something suddenly you begin to pray man tabo satire then a vision is open unto you and you will see the room that you were walking to that just looked like you were moving up and down and god begins to communicate to you secrets bible says the secrets of lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants yahweh Yahweh, 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 take us to that plane, oh God. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. When you become a man and a woman of prayer, you begin to perceive. You know in the spirit. You cannot tell how it is done. Suddenly you are praying and you are searching for a scripture, and then you just know that it's in Isaiah. How you cannot tell sometimes the holy spirit tells you go to isaiah 6 verse 44 sometimes he just says go just go there he speaks to you because he's talking to your spirit man it's your mind that does not know where that scripture is your spirit knows and when you allow your spirit you will turn to that exact verse i was searching for this scripture while i was i was just preparing and searching for the scripture the lord said okay let's do a quick training let your spirit man take place. I will not tell you the scripture. Don't search for it. Let your spirit man find expression. Suddenly, I don't know how I knew it. I just went straight. Acts chapter 14. And there it was. There are times that people come to cover my eyes. And I tell them, don't tell me who you are. I use every opportunity to train my ability to perceive things in the spirit. There are times that you begin to pray. And when the host of heaven comes, you know you know how many of you have just sat down and then your friend wants to come and cover your eyes and then you just turn who told you he was coming your spirit man your spirit man your spirit man you are in the room and suddenly you are moving and you just know i'm not alone and then you sense when you train yourself you can know that oh angels are in this room then you suddenly know that no there is a presence these are not angels these are not angels. The 
they are beings in this room but they are not angels as you walk around your house you perceive their presence everywhere and you know Kenneth E. Hagin walked in this dimension of perception to a point that he would see the angels he knew them by name and when they showed up in his meeting he would greet them and say how are you can you imagine you just drop in your house as soon as you lift your hands to knock the door you know that darkness is over this territory and suddenly you look and you tell your father and you tell your friends there's no time to greet you i'll greet you after three days there is darkness they say what do you mean darkness we're enjoying seriously in fact we just got a breakthrough we said that's what you are you are judging as a carnal man i'm speaking to you from the plane of the spirit i do not see light you are celebrating light but what i perceive is darkness let us get to the place of prayer and as you begin to pray in the spirit these mysteries are unveiled to you many of us judge things sometimes satan deceives you and then when you see a breakthrough you are smiling in the physical realm well god how many of you have gotten certain blessings but there's no rest over that blessing yet it's not like you know it's god but it looks like no 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 this this is not all the story yet something while you want to relax god says this is not the time to sit down you just sense it many foolish people that's the time we sit down and cross our leg when a ministry is expanding and people are coming my soul find rest but a man who stays upon the mountain judges from that perspective and he looks at that plane and he knows that although this is it this is what god wants to do Yahweh, 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 teach us your ways, O oh God, teach us your ways, O oh God. Hallelujah. This is how I receive some of the songs that we share here. I've told you again and again that most of the songs I bring are not composed. As I allow my spirit man to interact with the realm of the spirit, suddenly I begin to hear voices. That's how the song Adonai came. It was a song that I heard the angels singing. Adonai Lamb of God That's why it comes with a touch of eternity You are worthy Worthy of my praise King of kings Lord of lords Let your kingdom reign in my heart Let your kingdom reign in my heart the angels sing this song Adonai sing Adonai I'm not a superstar these are realities in the spirit they are for your reach when I hear the sound of angelic choir I don't just hear tenor alt alto and soprano they are a million parts combined together and that's why hear me when the music directors function under the anointing they begin to put in the parts that can attempt to synchronize the, have you ever worshiped god and you got to a point where you know you are rising in that worship 
that's why when you start worship, worshiping God any mistake will bring you back to that realm that's why we press for perfection because when you begin to worship suddenly from the corridors of heaven the saints begin to join in that worship and there is a union of the families in heaven and the earth Abraham Isaac Jacob the saints they join us in that worship and there is a strong presence there are some songs that seem to be timeless they carry certain anointings and certain presence you sing them again sometimes you don't know all the song but that part you know is able to help you relate with the spirit when god wants to take you through certain planes what happens is that he shows you hear me he shows you some songs and those songs are able to help you they are vehicles of transportation they are not a means for special number every that's why you see us sing certain songs and we keep repeating them Muimaka, Muimaka. Muimaka sujada naimaka ni naimaka naimaka sujada ni naimaka 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 ehe sujada naimaka ni naimaka ni naimaka sujada naimaka naimaka while you are singing you do not realize that you are climbing a ladder in the spirit your abilities increase that's why sometimes you see that the worshipers don't change songs they keep repeating they keep repeating your flesh may just be singing and is weak but god is saying keep singing you are climbing the more you sing you are exposed to a greater dimension of his light and power Naimaka Sujada Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Sujada Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Sujada Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Nina Himaka Lord I give you I give you I give you, I give you, I give you. Hallelujah. Spiritual perception, the ability to know, to recognize, and to align with the operation of the realm of the spirit. The voice of the spirit, his promptings, his dealings, his leading. As you train your spirit man in the place of prayer you rise to that plane in the spirit where these operations are no longer foreign to you so you exist both as a physical homo sapien and as a spiritual man there are some of us that when you begin to pray the moment you are praying in the spirit suddenly a river of joy breaks open in your spirit in the darkest of times physically suddenly the holy spirit tells you start singing a song of thanksgiving start giving thanks and you say lord for what i just had a report he says see i'm showing you what is happening in the heavens and you begin to rejoice and people say you are mad you say no i'm not mad i'm only alive in the spirit and you begin to give him praise you give him praise you worship and you are sweating you are not praying you lock yourself you just rejoice again and again and you rejoice for the bible says with joy shall you draw out of the wells in the realm of the spirit joy is a fetter it's not just a phenomenon every time there is heaviness god brings a garment and he calls it praise when the psalm was caught up he saw that praise is not just a phenomenon i saw in the realm of the spirit that the moment they begin to make music these sounds you are hearing they are living things in the spirit they 
are leading teams. Let me show you a scripture. Psalms 49. I want to show you a powerful scripture. And you understand why we play music as we sing. Psalms 49. Soon going to rise up and pray. I give you the highest, highest praise. To give. I give you the loudest, highest praise. To give. I lift my holy hand. I give you. I give you, I give you the highest praise. I give you, I give you the highest praise. I give you the highest praise. I give you the highest praise. I give you the I need you to know hear me you hear what they are playing these are chords in the spirit they speak languages are you listening to me so when a spirit filled keyboard is sits he begins to play by the spirit every key from do re mi fa so all of them are languages in the spirit your ability to combine the chords there is a language he speaks let me show you psalms 49 verse 3 it says my mouth shall speak of wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding verse 4 I will incline my ear to a parable I will open up my dark sayings upon the harp upon the harp there's something I will do to your spirit that every time I hear the harp play it will position your spirit in a way that you begin to unveil dark things. Bible says, For they know not, neither do they understand. They grow up in darkness, and so the earth is out of course. Have I not said that you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High? It takes the understanding. On how to navigate the paths and the planes of the spirit this is what gives victory this is the tool you need if you can get this and you can catch this you can be a victor in this life no matter what happens you will emerge victorious for you will know when there is victory in the spirit you will know when there is a cause for travail when you do not understand the things that are happening around you you will switch to the frequency of the spirit for explanation what meaneth these things oh lord and he begins to speak unto your spirit man now as we examine this series on prayer i want you to pray with understanding many people pray foolishly that's why we do not reap the benefits of prayer prayer is not just a sign of spirituality there's more to that God cannot be joking with you he's not playing games he's not playing pranks hallelujah perception in the spirit we live in a day and age where many people just sit down and evil comes to sweep them with no knowledge whatsoever not with the spiritual man not with the spiritual man for every time you reign from the heavens and there is a perception if it is true that you are seated with christ it must translate just from confession to becoming your reality and it's our job in this place to build men and women who are spiritual you don't get spiritual because of ministry when we begin to get spiritual the next thing we begin to envision pulpit no is the secret for life and in the next few minutes the spirit of prayer will fall upon us let me tell you something i need you to pray in these weeks that we're entering into is a time of prayer 
there's no room for laziness except you're not interested in growth want your spirit man to come alive you're not filled with the holy ghost right here right now there's no time to do the teaching for you but you will receive there is enough power to get you started we'll explain it later hallelujah so we are going to pray rise up on your feet say quicken us and we shall call upon your name we need a generation of power men who have power with god the miraculous and the supernatural realm was never designed to be for preachers we will cheat you and will be wicked people if all we are interested in is being superstars on stage as you pray hear me for many of you there will be an activation an activation insight in the spirit insight in the spirit sound people i want you to follow me please with the clash of the symbol and every spiritual mystery go ahead and pray if your seat is inconveniencing you push it away for the next 15 minutes in the spirit Come on, pray. Inside and outside. Power of the 
Generals Commanding power In the heavens Power In the spirit That you will be An inferno of fire That cannot be touched Not by sickness Not by failure that you will know the promptings of the spirit and how to navigate the planes and the parts of the spirit. Let the least among us be a person of power. Power in the heavens. Where signs and wonders become our natural lives. Where signs and wonders. Come on, pray. That you be men of faith. When you pray, you will have faith. When you pray, Faith will arise. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building up yourselves. The ability to trust God. The capacity to believe. Brother, in the place of prayer. The capacity to see the unseen. To hear the unheard. The capacity. To believe God, the capacity to rise 
above your senses. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hear me. Hallelujah. Listen, friends. Hear me. This is how spiritual men are groomed and trained. This is how men become signs. They don't just manifest signs. They become it. This is how men become men of faith that they can believe impossible things. When you become a man of prayer, doubt dies. The capacity to believe God. You flee from danger. Your eyes are opened. Seeing is not a luxury of prophets. It's the heritage of the sons. Sharing is not the luxury of anointed people. For when you pray, the veil is taken from your eyes. Hallelujah. Friends, listen to me. In these next three weeks, I trust that God will enlarge our capacity. You will walk in unusual faith. One of the proof of a man of prayer is faith. You can never truly pray with understanding without being a man of faith. No. Because when you pray, you will hear. And with that hearing, faith will come. The rhema of God puts faith in your spirit. Hallelujah. I glorify your name in all the earth. In all the earth. Even as we round up, let's give him praise. I glorify your name in all the earth, in all the earth. I magnify your name. I magnify your name, yes, Lord, in all the earth. truly we truly desire you we're tired of church we're tired of a few superstars called men of god standing on stage we're tired of apostles and prophets making show on stage we're interested in raising men of power i know god tonight we repent of religion and we pray that you call us to a place of power hallelujah listen to me hear me hear me you will go back home with the spirit of prayer hallelujah these three weeks is a time of prayer individual prayer don't just get used to corporate prayer partner you must learn to know the secret place alone he not them he that dwells there are languages God will show you and speak to you in the secret place. Cultivate a personal time. Now is not the time to roam around. You don't generate power like that. You don't sow your way into power. You build your way. Hallelujah. For many of us as you begin to pray, you will come up with ideas that will end poverty in your life and your family forever no it's not it's not a prophecy that's a problem with church 
there are some things that are not gotten by receiving they are gotten as a reward for building yourself in obedience where that scripture will be fulfilled that he makes his angel spirits and his ministers flames i want you to be such a flame of fire that when you enter your room any man that does not love god you don't need to drive and cast your presence commands power i can never run away from a witch over my dead body and all of this i i i, I don't even know anything about witches and wizards i don't i don't it's not that i'm not i'm careless the most important thing i need to know about them i already know that i have victory over them do you realize that the success of these meetings are riding on the wings of prevailing prayer not carelessness and wearing suit and crossing our legs it's not the time it's a time for business it's a time to raise others i saw one of our ladies we were in mina we just came in today we went to minister and i saw her glad to know that we have built her to become a woman of power right now for reasons they cannot explain god just promoted her and she's now the secretary to the nyse coordinator for no reason when you command power with god you will flow in this realm friends don't let anybody deceive you you need to build capacity in the spirit it's the secret for a victorious life for the work that god is committing unto you is great and you need great energy the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small when you pray in the spirit you can stand criticism you can stand pressure when you give in too easily you are not a strong man in the spirit when you give in too easily trying to explain to everybody ah i meant this uh -uh. build capacity and your father looks at you and says you're a failure just smile there's there's no point going back to cast any devil where we become strong men in the spirit one day that cry will now be the comforters because of the strength that you have god will show you things and you will save people from catastrophes god will take your eyes and show you the treasures in darkness and the hidden riches that are in secret places and then with the spirit he will do business in the deep waters you will not need to go down to egypt for help because he will show you the treasures that are in the waters help us tonight oh god in the name of the lord jesus help us cause us to be men of power cause us to be men of power now is not the time to build titles now is not the time for ministry now is not the time for eni are you listening to me now is the time for business the business of building people i don't know where i'll see some of you tomorrow but one thing i know is that within the time that we have we will do the job that god commits to us so that when you become an overseer in your ministry when you become a leader we are certain that an ambassador is there for you hallelujah and as surely as the lord lives he will honor our desires lord we thank you we thank you for the privilege of building ourselves in the spirit lord i pray that we will leave this place with a true spirit of prayer prevailing prayer prayer that brings results that we will command results in our lives lord as we pray we open us up let burdens be lifted let mysteries be unfolded and uncovered let the communications of the spirit be effectual in the place of prayer brothers and sisters this is a time of prayer read your book have your lectures but the time that you have invest invest in these three weeks god is going to be putting something in you that will be relevant for your destiny the training of a general it's not without tears don't expect me to to massage you 
I don't want you to be a weak and a beggarly person. I want you to be strong and to command power. Say, they that know their God, they shall be strong. They are the ones who will do exploits. Has nothing to do with your age. Has nothing to do with your gender. Not everybody will be relevant in the program of God. But as many who can pay the price, you will conquer death. He will stop fearing death. hallelujah lord we give you praise let's take a few announcements and then we're out of here please keep standing don't sit down just keep standing very quickly hallelujah before i take the announcements i want to say thank you to everyone your presence here keeps us in ministry and it's a proof that god is honoring our true desire to change and to build people those of you outside I want to say a big thank you i love you with all my heart some of you do not have seats i see people right at the back the seats are exhausted but you're standing and praying in this crowd where no one sees you destiny is finding you and tomorrow we may not see you but heaven will rejoice with you i want you to know that this is a sacrifice that will bring you more than life can give you hallelujah Okay, very quickly the following books are available Jordan bookstore okay. hallelujah